which character in the book of Joshua is mentioned in the first chapter of the New Testament? You work that out? First chapter of the New Testament, there's a reference to a character who's in the book of Joshua. Who do you think it would be? Well, I'll put you out of your misery straight away. I'll tell you, it is not Joshua. In fact, it's not even an Israelite at all. It's certainly not a leader. It's not a man, there's a bit of a clue there. And it's someone whose morals you might think are a little bit questionable because she's a prostitute and her name is Rahab. And she's in Matthew chapter one, verse five, we're told in the genealogy of Jesus, Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, who was uh, one of Jesus's ancestors, who was the great grandfather of King David. Boaz married Ruth. You perhaps you remember the story of Ruth. Well, Boaz's mother was Rahab, a prostitute from Jericho, who features in this story in Joshua chapter two. I've condensed the story a little bit because it's quite long, but you might read the whole thing. Joshua chapter two, verses one to 21. Now, just a reminder that Joshua has been appointed as the leader to bring God's people into the promised land. But the land is already inhabited by the Canaanite nations, seven strong, powerful nations. And therefore, Israel is going to have to displace them. How is that going to happen? Well, here's how the story starts in uh, Joshua chapter 2. Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies. Go look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I've shown kindness to you. The men said, when we enter the land, tie this scarlet cord in the window and bring your father and mother, your brothers and all your families into your house. If any of them go outside your house into the street, their blood will be on their own heads. We will not be responsible. Agreed, she replied, let it be as you say. So she sent them away and they departed and she tied the scarlet cord in the window. Rahab the prostitute from Jericho who becomes an ancestor of Jesus. How on earth does that happen? Well, the point is she gets built in, brought in, grafted into God's people, the Israelites, because Faced with the uh, invading force of Israel, she sides with God's people and not with her own people. And uh, in talking to the spies, she has this uh, uh, basic but still clear expression of her own faith. She says, I know that the Lord has given you this land. I mean, it's amazing that she even refers to him as the Lord. She doesn't say your God or the God of Israel. She says, I know that the Lord has given you this land. I, I, I know we're going to be conquered, but I want to be part of your side. I want to be with the Lord and to have him with me. And the spies agree. And what they uh, do next, I think, is a really beautiful reminder of the Passover. You remember how in the Passover, the night that God's people left Egypt, they had to paint the blood of a lamb on the lintel and the doorposts of their houses so that the angel of death would uh, pass over their houses and uh, the destructive plague would not touch anyone in the house. Well, the spies say to Rahab, uh, here's a piece of scarlet cord. Tie this in your window. And when we come into Jericho and destroy the city, we will see the scarlet cord and we will pass over your house. Rahab's being incorporated in Israel, even in the very experience of Passover, she's being given that little way of belonging to Israel. And it's a brilliant reminder to us that when God sent his people into Canaan, um, th there was the opportunity for people to join with God's people. 
Uh, we often think that the Old Testament was uh, relentlessly Jewish, relentlessly Israelite, that there was no chance anyone outside the nation of Israel could possibly have a relationship with God. But Rahab shows us that that wasn't always the case. And the fact that she then became an ancestor of King David and ultimately of the Lord Jesus himself shows that she was totally brought in. Maybe uh, there are people we know who are total outsiders to the kingdom of God, never had any kind of Christian background, uh, any kind of um, uh, churching in their past or present. And uh, it's tempting to say, well, people who've always been on the outside will always be on the outside. Not the case. Not the case with Rahab. Not the case with many who are brought into God's people because he is the merciful, loving God who desires all people to come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved through Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your mercy, which goes beyond all bounds, even bringing someone like Rahab into your family. We thank you for her faith. Uh, which meant that uh, she was uh, able to look after the spies and then uh, to be spared when uh, Jericho fell. And we thank you that she was an ancestor of King David and of the Lord Jesus. We thank you that you've brought us into your family, even though uh, by and large uh, we are not Jewish ourselves. Uh, we're brought in because your mercy is for all people. And as you promised to Abraham and Sarah, the blessing is through your people to all nations. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining me. God bless you and have a great day. Mm -hmm.